Hey guys, today I'm going to give you a little bit of an update on my store as well as some of the interesting things that Rudy said, Alpha Investment said, and he is maybe worried about that actually put my store in a better place. So I've always find, found it fascinating that Alpha Investment's very successful as the Magic Channel but he doesn't have a Pokemon channel like Darium. Darium actually, uh, Darium CCG is now a huge Pokemon channel from the original Card Shop Life with Megan and Aaron and the whole crew and of course Darium. It seemed like they were having a lot of fun and then they destroyed their magic channel. They didn't destroy it, they just got rid of it. It's called Just Another Channel now. And why would they do that, right? Why did they leave Magic and go to Pokemon? Maybe the same reason that Unsleeved Media, although we couldn't say that Unsleeved Media left Magic, that he was more like he was banned for life, and then he was forced into doing other stuff, which it turned out to be um, political drama related, I, I believe, or gaming related. I guess he became a uh, gaming news channel now, uh, the Quarterling. So I have learned from the short period I've been in business from having a store that Magic, the customers of Magic are very different from the customers of Pokemon or anime uh, in the fact that they want to stay there at your store for hours upon hours and just hang out, which is one of the reasons I opened a Magic store to begin with. But they're very different from the customers of Pokemon or even Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, the Pokemon customers, they will normally they are parents and they will come in and buy product and leave as quickly as possible. So you need to streamline it so all your packs are organized, all the tins are organized. Kids can choose their favorite Pokemon. You have a bulk bin with all the Pikachus out in front because you know that's what little kids want. They want all the Pikachus regardless of if it's valuable or not. And that's why it makes a pretty clean and fast experience. Therefore, if you were to brand yourself like Darium, um, Darium owns a physical store as well. I think it's in Ohio somewhere. Uh, the whole beef about uh, Darium's Tolarian Community College and the Mana Source, uh, that was due to a convention that everyone was going to fly to Ohio somewhere and have a Magic to Gathering convention. That's how tight-knit the group was at the time, or so we believed. But Pokemon, I don't mind. Um, I don't play Pokemon myself. I do play the online card game once in a while. And I do like playing Pokemon Go. But the card game is beyond me. I created another Pokemon channel. I think Pokemon has a very bright future. Just because it's Pokemon. It's, you know, when you have a Pikachu, it's a Pikachu. Uh, in Magic the Gathering, you have to worry about, oh, this is a card. And it used to be in standard. And now no one plays it. And it is worthless. So, uh, the anime is also very good. I think it is, um, the margins are not very high in anime, but your um, target buyer is going to be very picky about conditions and box conditions, all this great stuff. But they're also going to be good buyers and they're not going to stick around a lot. So, Pokemon, I wanted the experience to be more like, so in Magic, I wanted the experience to be more like Pokemon and anime where they just come by and go. And that's why I buy blister packs. Now blister packs have the other advantage of, I don't need to worry so much about um, the booster box prices being direct to consumer or them you know, selling booster boxes for a very low price or the mythic editions because my core demographic is more lines with someone shopping at Walmart and Target than it is with someone buying a booster box, which is a local game store. I never wanted to, I never thought being a local game store would have been successful as a business model. I don't think anyone can. If you watch Alpha's investments videos, you will be very, it's very obvious why. I mean, he points out at all the good examples of why a local game store is not going to be successful in today's age. Competition is too high. Volume is too low. Customer loyalty is non-existent because everyone's just going to buy it cheaper online or 
even from Hasbro's eBay site, right? <laughs> as interesting as that sounds, they have their own eBay site. Um, and it's not just Magic Cards. They have an eBay site for everything. It's like their store. Like, it's so funny that a multi-billion dollar company is using another multi-billion dollar company as their storefront when they could have made so much more money just investing, which is what Alpha Investment is saying right now. They will invest in... Uh, a online magic direct to consumer store which will make things a lot cheaper because you cut out the middleman right so you cut out secondary market you cut out the store you cut out the distributor and you cut out like uh, the Rudy like uh, patron you're cutting out so the cow is only so big and you need to slice off pieces of the cow to feed the distributors, to feed the local game stores, to feed the online vendors, to feed the TCG players, to feed... So let me ask you this. If you can buy a box cheapest on the direct-to-consumer which is the Coach website, and it's $20 cheaper than TCG player, $20 cheaper than any other big box vendor, why would you not buy from Wizards of the Coast, Right? They've already started to build out their customer service. They've already started hiring. You can go check. You can even work with them, right? Like you can, you can even work for them. I'm sure that it's a lot of remote jobs. And the ones that, that don't outsource to India, they'll pay you minimal wage to do customer service because that's how they roll. Of course, you'll be at 1099. It's not like they will give you health insurance or anything like that. But my main point is um, I, have isol- I have insulated my store and my model from this stuff because I knew this stuff was coming. As soon as I saw the Mythic Edition, I understood that the next step was they were going to open a store and they were going to just destroy the distributor, destroy the local game stores because they don't need them anymore. They have MTG Arena. So Pokemon, most stores don't have Pokemon organized Pokemon events. They just don't. And what they do is they put the code in the pack. So everyone just plays Pokemon online because you buy your cards. Oh, cool. I got a cool GX card, a shiny card. Nice. Oh, here's the code. The code, so Pokemon pack costs about $3. Uh, it's always on sale, Best Buy, GameStop. It's always $3. Out of that $3, 70 cents to a dollar is the code. So think about that for a moment. of the value of a Pokemon booster pack isn't the cards because no one uses them. They just collect them to collect, but it's actually the code. How weird is that, right? Like, isn't that weird? But the Magic the Gathering model will become something very similar. I think it should be, and I would not be surprised at all. They're actually putting codes in the Planeswalker decks. I've opened a few, and I was surprised to find that there was a code in them. I was like, oh. What do you get? I don't even know what you get. But just like, you know, just like Pokemon, they're moving digital. And digital gives them 100% margin because after they're done, it's a software play, right? It's like a Fire Emblem Heroes. It's like a Pokemon Go. Once you develop the software, you do have to update it once in a while for the new cards. But there's no distribution cost. There's no cost. I mean, there may be some customer service, but... There's no distribution, there's no sales team, there's no local game store, there's not none of this stuff that annoys Wizards of the Coast. There's only money. And that's the beauty of esports. Like League of Legends, you just buy skins and it's just money. There's not, like after the skin is designed, you can sell it a million times and it'll cost the exact same to sell one copy or a million copies. And that's the beauty of MTG Arena. It is a very beautiful model. I couldn't imagine a more money-based model, but that means a local game store shouldn't have to host an event. So this whole WPN, and then they took away the uh, game day promos, not the game day promos, the um, FNM promos, then they changed FNM to casual FNM and gave people lands, which now you can buy in the uh, <laughs> packs, right? So it's the lands were nothing special, it turns out. Uh, you can get them anywhere. You can find them on the floor now. There is nothing special about going to your Friday Night Magic. There's nothing special about going to your game day. And a lot of you have said that to survive, a store needs to diversify. It needs to diversify. I would challenge you and say that the product, you have to be very careful about the product. 
And the product I have carried is blister packs. I do not carry booster boxes. I mean, ex I used to buy old booster boxes, and with the exception of those old booster boxes I still have, I no longer buy booster boxes. I just buy blister packs. The buyer for a blister pack is very different from the buyer for a booster box. And many of you say, hey, why don't you just open the booster box and sell the individual packs? That buyer is very different. So someone who buys a blister pack is buying it as a add-on item. It is, you know, during checkout, they see the pack of magic. Hey, I'll add it on. But they're not going to your store with the specific purpose of buying magic cards. They're going to see, oh, you know, I'm going to buy a board game or I'm going to buy a higher ticket item. Maybe even, I don't know, like a, some Pokemon cards or a Charizard for a friend or some anime figures that cost $200, some Blu-rays, and they buy it as a casual item. They will buy a blister pack. Uh, they, that's why GameStop sells it. That's why Target sells it. My model was never to be a local game store. It was always to model GameStop. It was always to model Target and Walmart. That's the customer I want. No one goes to Target and says, hey, you know what? I'm going to play Magic here for eight hours. No, they don't do that. I'm going to use the air conditioning and the Wi-Fi and the TV. And you have to feed me food once in a while. I'm going to use your bathrooms and get your toilets clogged. And no one, I mean, no, you just buy the stuff at Target and you go home. Same with Walmart, same with GameStop. GameStop is such a small, at least the GameStops in my area, in Humboldt, they're so small that, like, why would you even want to be there for eight hours or four hours or two hours? Like, you, you couldn't, you wouldn't want to be there. It's, like, too small. And so rent is cheaper. Um, the, the flow of customers is faster. And that's why the blister pack. So a lot of times people come in the store and they're expecting a F&M experience, expecting like a full on huge store experience. But I've calculated with my friend that this is not profitable. What is profitable is the, vein, the vending machine. So eventually I'm just going to buy some vending machines. I'm going to make one for Magic. I'm going to make one for Pokemon. I'm going to make one for Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is actually semi-profitable. It's surprising, I know, but... You know, you got to go with the mo where the money is. And then people will put in their free dollars or three dollars and 50 cents. And then they'll buy their packs via vending machine. And then the marketing agency will be in the back and no one even needs, there doesn't need to be someone there. I mean, if they ring the doorbell or something like that, our, mar our current place is, used to be a dentist office. So there's the waiting room, which is separated. And then there's the marketing agency. The waiting room is where I had my magic store. But now I'm just going to have a bunch of vending machines. And we'll just sell magic packs that way. So it will be little, little interaction. Because I don't think you can pay a full-time employee to run a store. At least $15 an hour. I've, I've made the math. I've done the calculations. I have one and a half months of data. And the data shows me that it's just not feasible to pay someone $600 a week. Uh, that's just salary. Now you have overhead, you have social security, a 401k, you have uh, health insurance. Health insurance is 250, 260, 280. Actually, no, it's more. I, I just did it. Uh, 320 for an entry level employee a month that you pay on your end. And then they pay like some percentage. I'm not sure what they pay, but it's 290, 290, 320 a month in addition and so that employee is going to cost you a lot of money now a vending machine is just a machine you just plug it in and then off it goes you just eats a little bit of electricity so that's my new model my new model is hoard a bunch of blister packs especially old ones i'm really interested in old ones but obviously we'll have the new sets too and then have vending machines in the front of our office and then people can come in they can put in their money they can get the cards and then they can leave I like it. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, that's my new model. I think it's going to be successful. We have pivoted. And then obviously they can buy like uh, Planeswalker decks or Pokemon tins. Like, we'll, we'll have to get like vending machines that can spit out Pokemon tins. Uh, they can buy Blu-rays. I know because I've seen them at Dave & Buster's. So you can put whatever you want in these vending machines. Maybe they can even win games. Like maybe they win tickets and stuff. I don't know. That seems like it would be really expensive, but I'm hoarding these two packs and these tins and these Planeswalker decks and these blister packs.
because that's the model I want to go with. I want to go with a vending machine model. And for the sake of the vending machines, I think you need the thing to loop around. And the booster boxes don't make any sense to me to continue to invest in. I don't think they were ever a good. I know Rudy always says invest in booster boxes, invest in Battle Bond, invest in Conspiracy 2, which is already too late. Um, you know, I opened a ton of Conspiracy 2. I said to buy those, and I have a bunch of them. But it's not like I said that like there's a high demand for it. Yes, I can see that the price is going up and up and up. But how am I going to sell it? Like, how do you, a non-Rudy, sell Magic cards? You don't have the subscriber base that Rudy has, and you're going to get destroyed by fees. Like, it's not going to work, and you're going to get destroyed by shipping. And yes, I know there's easier ways to ship, and you know I've been told blah blah blah. This post office. At the end of the day, I don't want to deal with that. You know, I don't want to deal with it. Uh, I think Magic the Gathering can make money. I think it is a very profitable venture. But you have to treat it very smart. Uh, you, I don't think you can hire a full-time employee. I agree with Rudy on that absolutely 100% that your store should be just a warehouse where you can buy people's collections. And that's what I've done. Um, I've bought some interesting collections. Nothing like crazy like Rudy shows, but uh, what do you expect? I mean, I live in this area. I like the concept. I like o opening the store. But... Some of the things that, you know, when you mirror a local game store, you are going to fail. And you do have to think outside the box. You do have to be very smart about what products you buy. And you have to be very smart about how you sell and who you're selling it to. Um, to be quite honest, I get lots and lots of comments. Oh, I don't want to work at your store. I want to work at your store. I get text messages. It's so annoying, really, because there is no job here. There's no future at the store. I can't, I'm not going to hire someone and then not be able to guarantee their future. Or I don't want to hire anyone that I cannot see working here 15 years from now because there's no point. Like if you're not going to be here 15 years, then what's the point? Um, you have an advance. You didn't think it was a good job. You left. So we trained you. We spoiled you. We took you out to dinners. We took you out to lunches. We hung out. We became a family. And then you just left. I don't want that. I really don't want that. Anyway, um, subscribe to my other channel. I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to get uh, a certain number. And once I hit that certain number, then I'll go berserk on the social media community in Houston who have ostracized me. And really, really just, I think it was based on my ideology. Um, I'm not the easiest and most friendly person, of course. Of course, they're going to claim other things, but really it's based on ideology. Anyway, uh, please subscribe to my other channel. Love you guys tons. And uh, remember, can I have a dollar? Can I have un peso? Un peso.